Initially, many multinationals implementing profit-shifting structures would use a tax haven company, uh, one or more of them, to contract directly with customers in various countries around the world, contracting, of course, with customers or users uh, in each country. In recent years, the uh, obvious difficulty that many countries saw in seeing their tax bases depleted through this kind of direct access to their citizens, residents, and, uh, and local companies directly from a tax haven company has caused these countries to put pressure on multinationals to set up local revenue generating subsidiaries. This discussion speaks a little bit about this and also looks at the question of how does some of that income that's recognized you know, in the local country of the customer, how does that income get paid on to the multinational back uh, eventually in its home country or in some tax haven intermediate company. In the time we have remaining, I'd like to do uh, two things. Uh, one of the matters that was, or one of the things that was uh, mentioned in a, a couple of the, uh, uh, a couple of the presentations uh, was the future movement of transactions that are currently being done, let's say, from Ireland uh, or from Singapore, the movement of those transactions to local companies. Uh, I think uh, one of you mentioned uh, New Zealand as requiring it. So uh, just as an example, let's say we have the U.S. up at the top and then we have uh, an Irish company and so on. Let's just Assume that right, right now, before any changes, we have a customer down here in New Zealand and the transaction is, uh, is like that. And New Zealand is complaining and saying, hey, uh, we want these transactions to be booked through a local entity. So instead, eventually a new New Zealand company is set up and it starts to earn the income from the provision of software or services or whatever it is that that uh, this group is providing to this individual. That puts revenue into a New Zealand entity. How does some of that revenue result eventually in payments back to here. Okay, so there's some sort of sub-license over here, and that's, that's correct. Now, the obvious question is, what is the nature of that payment under the sub-license? Is that something that is a royalty? Are there often withholding taxes on royalties? At least what I've seen over the past several years when I see things written about this, there's a lot of, uh, let's say, happiness from the standpoint of uh, governments uh, like New Zealand saying that, gee, we want to recognize the, the income locally, but there's no discussion, I've seen no discussion of uh, what about withholding taxes on the payments coming out. But aren't they generally all royalties because they're characterized as royalties? Well, do you think that whatever this U.S. company is would put a label of royalty on that? No. No, they wouldn't. Uh, in fact, I think one of the three of you uh, uh, referred to it as an operating agreement. Yeah. Pardon? That's how Facebook refers to it as an operating agreement. Yeah. 
Uh, I haven't uh, read all of it because uh, it runs on to like 250 or 300 pages, but there's actually an Indian court case that is uh, regarding Google that focuses on this and uh, in this case it's an Indian company as opposed to New Zealand and payments are being made under some agreement and a court has determined that gee at least some portion or all I don't remember the details because it's been a while since I've looked at it but that some portion of this is subject to royalty withholding now for a major country uh, from the standpoint of you know a lot of market share and India is an important country in this respect that's quite a, an amount of tax uh, there's another way to sort of think about this um, if we had just a simple thing of the US company let's say um, uh, going directly to that individual in uh, New Zealand does the U.S. company have any deduction for a royalty? Is there economically any deduction? Or is this, relatively speaking, pure profit in, in the area of cloud services uh, because the expenses of the uh, server farms and... Uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know other data transmission equipment and so on is relatively small compared to the amount of advertising revenues and that that these companies are earning. They've already spent over the last you know ten years developing their uh, uh, their software platforms, their business models. They're, of course, doing some continuing R&D, but uh, aren't their gross margins uh, pretty high? Anybody remember for their companies, for Google or for Facebook, what their margins are? Or even for Apple with respect to uh, products, uh, physical products. Okay, they're very high. The point is that when we look at here, the, U the U.S. company will have a large amount of profit. There is no royalty payment going off to anything because the U.S. company owns the intellectual property which creates this high return. When we break this up and we create separate legal entities like we have on this slide, all of a sudden we're creating royalties licenses and royalties which create deductions against the income which makes the amount of profit within that New Zealand company much smaller. When we do that, uh, since, li since license fees, royalties are typically subject to withholding, uh, that's still a large tax that New Zealand has access to. Again, one thing I have not seen is any discussion in articles or other sources as to whether New Zealand is actively going after uh, the characterization of that as a royalty. Uh, I've just seen it at least this one time with, uh, with Google in India. So this is a, a major unknown part of how there will be change in the future as more and more countries require this.